And we're joined now by Dr. Chad Sanborn. He's a board certified pediatric infectious diseases specialist from Kids Medical Services. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank the, you United, for me. the United States hasn't taken any of these extreme measures we just heard in those reports from around the world, but we are being urged to practice social distancing. What are the consequences of not isolating ourselves and do you think enough people are doing it? So I think uh, we need to take these issues seriously, and certainly it's important to try to practice social distancing as is occurring right now. The are, there are areas of the country where they are enforcing four stays, so people are encouraged not to leave their homes and to mingle with the public at all possible. So there are some measures similar to what's going on in other countries that's happening here in the U.S., but if we don't take these seriously, yeah, it could lead to many more cases here in the U.S., and I feel that not everyone is taking the precautions that need to in terms of social distancing. Yeah, we're looking at pictures right now of South Florida during spring break with people yeah. uh, still out, still going to the beaches. What is the difference between self-isolation and quarantine? So self-isolation would be something where you're keeping away from other people and acting like you're infected. So you don't want to uh, expose people in your even home potentially to infection. Quarantine would be something more where you're doing something on your own volition to stay in the home, but potentially something that even in other countries, particularly where law enforcement is making you stay in your facility. Okay, so as someone who deals with patients with infectious diseases, can you talk about the importance of protective gear for medical staff? And can you just speak anecdotally about the current supply issues? We see people buying up these masks and wearing them out in the public who may or may not even be sick. Yeah, you know, it's quite frustrating for us in the medical field, working in the hospitals and offices, et cetera, because there really is a shortage for most of these medical protective equipments that we need to be using to be taking care of patients and suspected patients. You know, these numbers are probably not going to get any smaller. The ERs, the floors, and the general pe pediatric and adult offices are going to be increased numbers, see increased numbers of uh, visits with patients with protect, potential infection. So I think we need to really conserve our resources. We're having shortages in hospitals here around South Florida, and it's a big issue because, uh, well, you know, we want to try to take care of patients and not become ill ourselves so we can't take care of patients or potentially spread disease. Of course, and you're on the front lines of this pandemic. There is still, of course, a lot we don't know about COVID-19, but initial assumptions were that it severely affected older people, especially those with underlying health issues. Uh, we, that's still the case, but a new study has found a small percentage of children, especially babies and preschoolers and young adults, can become seriously ill. How much does that concern you? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, certainly as a pediatric provider, we do get concerned that we hopefully will not see large numbers of children become ill and severely ill. You know, some of the studies do suggest that children can become quite sick. Certainly that's a problem, a concern. Uh, we don't expect to see the same numbers as elderly and 60-plus and uh, age individuals who will get sick, but that is a concern. And we need to learn more about how many children get minimally sick or have asymptomatic infection, uh, which would be a potential driver for infection in the community and spread to grandparents, parents, uh, other caregivers. So that would be the rationale behind a lot of these school closings that's occurring across South Florida is that we want to try to prevent the spread from children to other individuals and uh, amongst children themselves, as we know, they can get sick and sometimes severely sick, which is concerning. Doctor, can this virus mutate, for example, maybe in one area of the world it affects older people, but then starts to mutate and change and affect younger people? Or is that something we still don't know yet? Something we don't have a whole lot of information, nor suggestion that that's occurring. There were some papers out of China where they thought that may have been occurring, but it doesn't seem to hold true quite well across the world. So at this time, I don't think it's something that we have to be particularly concerned about. However, we have to be cognizant and we have to look at all age groups and even people without risk factors as potential uh, cases of infection. So we can't uh, rely on data that might be changing as we speak. Dr. Chad Sanborn, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us today. My pleasure. Thank you.